Hi there, we are Lisa and Chris. Please join us aboard our main ship 390, Cool Beans, as we cruise America's Great Loop. We started off the week with a boat hull and prop inspection. We felt a slight vibration in our travels to Oswego, so Don from Tranquility used his GoPro to look at our prop and we saw a barnacle on the prop. When we got to Clayton, he so very kindly offered to jump into his wetsuit and scrape it off for us. And good news for all of us, it had loosened and already fallen off on the trip between Oswego and Clayton. Here is his view with the GoPro confirmation. We sure appreciate his assistance. That afternoon, we all headed over to the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton. This was a fantastic museum we highly recommend visiting. It's so large, we didn't have enough time to explore the whole thing, but we did see replica antique boats, and we also watched a neat virtual reality show on the St. Lawrence River. A quick stop at the local cheese shop to load up on specialty cheeses and chocolates, and then we headed back to our boats. Susie took this pic of a baby otter we saw in the marina. For this week's interesting boat information, I'm going to answer some questions I got from you guys in the YouTube comments about our Starlink. I am so happy to answer them because I really relied on our fellow loopers to steer us in the right direction when we were making our decision. So we ordered the standard kit, which included the Generation 3 dish, Generation 3 router, Starlink cable, AC power cable, and power supply. Here are all the measurements of the dish. And all of this with shipping and tax costs $560.62. Oh, and we had to buy a pipe adapter and the rail mount to attach it to the flybridge railing for a grand total of $108.96. We got both of those on Amazon. We signed up for the Roam plan, which allows us to access Wi-Fi from any location with unlimited mobile data. You can see here it says inland. On the loop, we're considered inland. And to answer Peter's question, we don't have power on the boat while underway, so I don't need it or use it while we're moving. I only use it when we are plugged into shore power or the generator is on. Some loopers might have constant power on their boat, so they could probably use it while underway. The roam plan is $150 per month. Note, it is easy to get confused when looking at the plans, which is why it took us so long to pull the trigger. There's also a boat plan that is $250 a month and $2,500 for the dish. That is not what we needed. They say that's best for maritime, emergency response, and mobile businesses. All I need it for is YouTube and Netflix. The next morning, we got ready for a very busy day. There is so much to do in this area. We took a car service over to Alexandria to catch a tour boat, which took us on a tour of the Thousand Islands in US and Canada, and then to Bolt Castle. We jumped on the boat and they took us around the islands with interesting narration. We learned a lot and saw some stunning homes. The Thousand Islands are a group of more than 1,800 islands in the St. Lawrence River, straddling the borders of U.S. and Canada. 
The Thousand Islands region was home to not only significant skirmishes between the U.S. and British-controlled Canada during the War of 1812, but its history as a vacation destination traces back to the Gilded Age, when many of the world's most wealthy and famous treated the region as their private playground. And the finale was a stop and tour of Bolt Castle. We spent about an hour and a half walking around this palace. It was stunning and we learned so much. George C. Bolt, millionaire proprietor of the world famous Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City, set out to build a full-size Rhineland Castle in Alexandria Bay on picturesque Hart Island. The grandiose structure was to be a display of his love for his wife, Louise. Beginning in 1900, 300 workers, including stonemasons, carpenters, and artists, began building the six-story, 120-room castle, complete with tunnels, a powerhouse, Italian gardens, and a drawbridge. Not a single detail or expense was spared. In January 1904, tragedy struck. Bolt telegraphed the island and commanded the workers to immediately stop all construction. Louise had died suddenly. A broken-hearted Bolt could not imagine his dream castle without his beloved. Bolt never returned to the island, leaving behind the structure as a monument of his love. For 73 years, the castle and various stone structures were left to the mercy of the wind, rain, ice, snow, and vandals. When the Thousand Islands Bridge Authority acquired the property in 1977, it was decided that through the use of all net revenues from the castle operation, it would be preserved for the enjoyment of future generations. Since 1977, several million dollars have been applied to rehabilitating, restoring, and improving the Heart Island structures. We ended our last night in Clayton by celebrating Yvonne's birthday at a fantastic Italian restaurant right on the river. We watched an antique boat motor by and enjoyed the amazing sunset. It was a special night with special friends. Good morning. Good morning. Where are we leaving and where are we going? We're leaving the United States and we're going to Canada. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Actually, we're leaving Clayton, New York, headed to Kingston. Ontario. Ontario. That's right. And we are very, very excited to get to the Canadian portion of our loop, right? Absolutely. It just so happened we met um, four or five boats from Canada yesterday on the docks and they all gave us tips on places to go and things to do while in Kingston. They did. They were so nice and they had a lot of questions about the loop and I hope I answered them sufficiently. Um, but anyway, well, um, so did we have a good time in Clayton? Absolutely. Well, did you have a good time? I sure did. I, I had a great time and uh, we saw a lot of great things and took a couple of tours and really enjoyed being here. Boy, and we ate some good food in Clayton, didn't we? Man. I'm telling you, that restaurant last night, I'll, I'll put it in something. I'll share it with everybody. But anyway, okay, well, uh, we're in our little Kingston flotilla. So I'm going to pan over our fearless leader. Tranquility is right there. And then I'm going to pan back over. Oh, panning's not fun. Uh, okay, and there's um, strumming along uh, behind us. We're in the middle today. So yeah, it's been it's been amazing a uh, couple of days. Under an hour into this trip, we crossed into Canadian waters. How exciting! We had Island Queen 3 pass us. She's a triple-decked Mississippi paddle wheeler with her port in Kingston, our destination. 
She goes to the Thousand Islands on tours and also has wedding ceremonies aboard. We passed the Wolf Island Wind Farm, which began in 2009 and has 86 wind turbines, which produce enough power for about 75,000 households. Coming into Kingston, we saw these four towers and did some quick research. These are called Martello Towers, which are small defensive forts that were built across the British Empire during the 19th century from the time of the French Revolutionary Wars onwards. Most were coastal forts. They stand up to 40 feet high with two floors and typically had a garrison of one officer and 15 to 25 men. Their round structure and thick walls of solid masonry made them resistant to cannon fire, while their height made them an ideal platform for a single heavy artillery piece. This is Cathcart Tower, and there are three more. One is in the marina where we are staying, the Shoal Tower. There's also Fort Frederick Tower and Murney Tower. We arrived safely to the marina and we began the process of checking in with Canada. More on that later, but we are officially Canadian visitors and are ready to explore. Travel Day 68. We went 19 nautical miles from Clayton, New York to Kingston, Ontario. What is your tip of the week? This week's tip is how easy it is to check into Canada. We were kind of nervous thinking this was going to be some big deal to uh, get checked in and have our respected. It was none of that. We called an 800 number. They asked us for our passport numbers, which we had. They asked us for our boat documentation number. We had that. She asked us a few simple questions, you know, about what we had on board, if we had any firearms around the boat, you know, that, these kind of things. And it was simple as that. She gave us a reporting number, and we made a little card for each side of the boat and put it in the windows, and it was that simple. Nothing to it. Great tip. The next morning, we explored the city, walked the area in this neat city park where there are geese everywhere. So in Texas, these are called Canadian geese, but do we call them just geese here? We also went to brunch, the grocery store, and a coffee shop. I bought some gifts for the family, a postcard for the grandkids, and had a lovely time walking and exploring. Kingston is a really cool town. Good morning. Good morning. Where'd we just leave and where are we headed? Left Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and we're headed to Picton, Canada. That's right. Why are we headed to Picton? It's halfway to the Trent Severn and we will spend the night on the anchor tonight. That's right. We haven't done that in a while. I'm excited. Are you? Absolutely. It's so peaceful and quiet. You don't have to worry about anything and it's just wonderful. And how did you like Kingston real quick? Kingston was great. Had a couple of great meals. Um, enjoyed walking around the town. Nice place. It really was. This, this uh, Canada has been great so far. All right, bye. We left Kingston for a nice five hour trip to Picton, halfway to the Trent Severn Waterway. Canada has lovely waterside views and we sure timed this right. These are ferries going back and forth, crisscrossing this waterway, and we were lucky enough to go right in between them. We dropped anchor in a great protected cove, and Susie sent me this lovely picture of cool beans at anchor and our moon view. Travel day 69. We went 32 nautical miles from Kingston, Ontario to Picton, Ontario. Here is a time lapse of us pulling up anchor. I thought it was interesting. Chris controls the windlass from the flybridge and I let him know what direction the chain is pulling while I lay the chain neatly in the anchor box. Note that I wear gloves, a necessary item for looping. I then use our wash down to rinse off the mud from the anchor and chain and then I lock it down and we're off.
The ride to Trenton was beautiful and a little windy. Strumming along led us all the way. Susie sent a great pick of cool beans and here they are following us. We arrived to the Trent Port Marina, which is beautifully kept, and enjoyed Chris's birthday dinner with the group. Our evening was capped off by a gorgeous moon above our marina. Travel Day 70. We went 34 nautical miles from Picton, Ontario to Trenton, Ontario. Welcome back aboard Cool Beans. This week we started off in Clayton, New York and uh, left Clayton and went into Kingston, Canada. And in Canada, we uh, had to check in with um, Canadian Customs. With the, yeah, yeah, Canadian Customs and give them our passport number and so forth. But we found something interesting. When we gave our <laughs> boat documentation number, she said, is it a 2002 main ship? I said, yes. yes. And she said, is the boat name main course and I said no it's cool beans so apparently our boat has been to Canada before and probably did the loop we had heard that it had done the loop but we didn't have any way of knowing that but right. um, it looks like it did the loop in the years past under the name of uh, main course very cool we re really enjoyed being in Kingston spent a couple of days there left Kingston and went to uh, Picton is that is that right yeah Picton. Picton. Mm -hmm. and from Picton we went to Trenton Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. Total of about 80 miles this week. Uh, stayed a couple of nights in a few of the places. Really, uh, it was a really nice week. Yeah, it's been great being back on the boat. Our first full week back. Um, mm -hmm. But Cool Beans is running great, knock on wood, and everything's going good. We're with our buddy boats and just enjoying this trip of a lifetime. So thanks everyone for watching. Keep the comments coming and we'll see y'all next week aboard Cool Beans. Mm -hmm.